So this is coming from personal experience, all right? So before I started the tournament fishing stuff, uh, me and Hybrid, we'd fish amongst our friends and our clique, and we would consider ourselves in, you know, the top 10%. And I think a lot of guys can put them, can relate to that, right? But as soon as we went to the tournament world, it was a big learning experience. And then now that we've gone back and forth between both worlds, uh, we find that these five tips we're about to give you, it helps no matter who you are, no matter if you're a weekend angler or you just want to go have fun or whether you're in the tournament world, bass fishing. This, these top five things is going to be key. And even for the tournament guys, and if you're watching this, you know what you're talking about, give me a thumbs up. Uh, you know, a lot of times after tournaments, we would ask everybody, you know, how'd you do, how'd you do, how'd you do? And if you just simply didn't catch them, then uh, I didn't, I don't have much to say. But if you kept, if you, if I ask you and you say, I broke them off, I couldn't keep them on, I just couldn't get a single bite, that type of stuff, then usually I throw some of this kind of advice out to you because I ran through that stage and I want to share this with you guys too. So if you're a, if you're a fisherman first time starting out, or if you're, if you're just that guy that's like, I'm just not consistent, these are the tips for you, okay? So, tip number one, you fish too slow. Meaning, you don't cover enough water. And you tend to do the same thing over and over. So, let me give you an example. So, so in my, in my tournament career, you can say, I, I I started off throwing topwaters, and then I went to crankbaits, and I really started doing good on crankbaits, but that didn't happen overnight. I started thinking about the stuff that a fish would do, okay? So, if a fish wouldn't react to a topwater, I'd throw a crankbait. When I threw a crankbait, I had one retrieve. It was a medium retrieve. I never thought for the longest time that I needed to change the retrieve, and when I... When that light bulb went off, I'd throw my uh, crankbait out there. I would do a medium retrieve, and then I'd burn the the next retrieve, and then I'd do a stop and go. If those three retrieves didn't do anything, then I put the crankbait down because they don't they don't want a crankbait that day. Same with every other uh, fishing scenario. If you go out there, if you do something. And they're you're not getting bites. Don't do it again. You know, um, either change the retrieve or change the location. So a lot of times that usually clues you in on what the fish are doing and what they're biting on that day. And that's always the key. Every time you go out, you always want to figure out what they're biting on so you can duplicate and be successful. So that's tip number one. You fish too slow. You're too slow to get something going. So by the time you do, it might already be too late. So that's Number one, you fish too slow, so pick up the pace. If you want something, you know, if I was going to recommend something on how to practice for this, I'd say you can only throw at something three times with the same lure. So say you go to this point, right? You get there, it looks good. You want to throw your shaky head on it. You can only throw it three times. That's it. If you're not getting bit on it, you got to go do something else. Or if you're not getting the right type of fish, do something else or move throw shake it somewhere else okay so keep that in mind that's number one all right guys before i continue i need you guys to click the subscribe button i need you guys to like the video and i need you guys to click that bell notification we got a lot of videos coming down the pipe and you don't want to miss anything all right so and the other thing is if you're watching this video and you need help with your fishing game the best thing to do before you go forward is to check your ego okay i mean that because if you're trying to learn something, you have to be a student of the game. And in a sense, this video is a coach, okay? So it'll help you not necessarily, like, it won't necessarily uh, make you better in terms of your skills, but better apply your skills, okay? So that's what I want you guys to get out of this video. Number two is, a lot of people that I've noticed is, and that I used to do this in my early days too, is, I'll do a little bit of research on a lake, and I'll and they'll say it's good on um, uh, say a wobble head or something, right? But I've never thrown a wobble head. I go out, I buy two wobble heads, and I buy like two creature baits. And I'll throw them, put them back wobble head. And tournament day comes around, and I start doing that. 
that's not good. You know, you have zero confidence on it. You only got eight hours to figure these guys out. You shouldn't be trying things or shouldn't be doing things that you have zero confidence in. Same with the weekend anglers, okay? So if you go out and your your goal that day is to put fish on the table because, say, there's a big family gathering happening and uh, people requesting fresh fish. I get that all the time, okay? When people come from out of town, when people come visit us from out of town, they want to eat fresh fish. So I'm kind of the guy, me, me and my crew here, I'm kind of the guy that, that's the go-to guys. There's like, okay, we want to eat white bass and stripers, okay? So can you guys give us three or four? And we're thinking like, yeah, it should be easy. But you know, it's always easier said than done, right? So when we go out, we always throw confidence baits. We don't venture. If it comes down, I call it crunch time. You don't, you don't, you always throw the stuff you are confident with. Okay, so if it's not, if you're not confident, don't, don't try to figure it out when it's, crunch day when it's tournament day so that's a good tip too okay don't throw anything that you're not confident with go ahead and play with that stuff on your fun days and things like that but when it comes down to crunch time throw what you're confident throw the hooks that you're confident with throw the lines you're confident with the rods and reels your system whatever you have i don't care if it's an ugly stick right and you just bought something brand new if you're most confident with the ugly stick take the ugly stick okay and that's tip number two. Tip number three, number trace is have a game plan. Have a kind of a game plan going in. The game plan doesn't have to be, I'm going to hit that rock, hit that point, hit that stump, and then go on and go on and go on. Kind of have a game plan on what you want to do. You know, Especially if you're going on a tournament road, do a little bit of research, do some Google Maps studies. Uh, maybe ask around. Ask, you know, if you're if you're in a tournament trail where it's okay to ask, ask around. See what that lake is per predominantly you know want on. Ask around. Get some information. Get a little bit of a plan going. Get your gear ready for that world. And in the striper world, it's it's kind of a what kind of stripers are in there? What kind of sizes are we expecting to catch? That type of thing. So you could better prepare the tackle because. You don't want to bring a 13 foot surf rod and all you're going to catch are 18 inch fish. Okay, that that's it's it's just you're not going to have a fun day. The rod's going to overpower the fish. The fish are going to, they're not even going to fight. And on top of that, you know you want fight too. You know it's it's still it's still got to be a, a fun thing, right? So you want to have fun. Uh, predominantly, uh, you want to catch fish also. So bring the correct gear for what you're trying to do. In the world of bass, is the same thing. Tournament fishing, right? You try to catch five big ones. Getting, you need to know: uh, is it a grass lake? Is it a rock lake? Is it a deep, clear reservoir? I mean, that shifts your tackle all the way around. Uh, us being from Oklahoma, we fish everything. Our trail covers mud water, shallow rocks, shallow grass, standing timber, clear water, running water. I mean it. It is everything. So every tournament is never the same equipment twice. Hardly ever. Okay, so so you gotta have a game plan. Kind of at least a game plan kinda going in. And that's something that you can't just go out swinging. You know, you can't just show up and then uh, all of a sudden you're on the lake and you look around and there's grass over there, and there's rocks over there, and you don't know what to do. Okay, so so lean on your strengths. Okay, if you're a grass fisherman, you like to throw frogs, you like to throw flukes, things like that, go to the grass. If you're a crackbait person, go to the rocks. If you like shaky heads, go to the rocks, that type of stuff. So stick to a game plan, stick to your strengths, but don't don't be afraid to throw the game plan out the window. We've done that multiple times. But once again, you'll have you'll have like a backup game plan. Okay, so a lot of times, a backup game plan works. So, for that's for the tournament world, right? But for the for the striper fishing world, don't be afraid to relocate. So a lot of times, what we'll do is, well, we want to be the first ones to the spot, right? Because you you there's a lot of angling pressure. First ones to the spot, reserve the spot, wait for that prime time to happen. Okay, so prime time happens, zero bites. You need to make a decision that as the sun's coming up, the bites should start coming. If the sun's starting to come up, the bites are not coming. That simply means there is no stripers there. 
Stripers are very aggressive. They will bite as soon as the sun comes up. Like, your bite opportunities should skyrocket. You might get one or two night, but as soon as it starts to get light, your bite opportunity skyrockets. If it doesn't, there's no fish there. You need to move. Okay, so that's one thing that I always tell people. Game plan, game plan, game plan. Usually, the more you move, the better, the more consistent you are. And if you move too much, that would be a problem too. But for the most part, moving around a lot is a good thing. All right, so that's number three. Number four. Number four. This is the one probably um, I would say I hear the most of. And this is one that's haunted me back into my childhood years, okay? Bad line and bad knots. This is where once you figure out a line that you like for whatever you're doing, you stick with it. You do not change, okay? So for me, growing up, it was actually uh, the Shakespeare Omniflex monofilament. Six pound test. It was cheap. It was like $3 for 500 yards, something like that. Loved it. It was cheap. Loved it. I knew the strengths and weaknesses of that line. It was in our system. I mean, our system was small back then. We had like two rods, right? But six pound line on both of them. It cast through far. It was great. Never changed it. Didn't change it for like 10 years. It's great. Then we started striper fishing with six pound line. <laughs> it's not It's not good. Okay, so Omniflex was there for like 10 years. And then we went to uh, Maxima Ultra Green, six pound. That's even better. Maxima, Maxima six is like, mm. still to this day. If I had to go back to six pound mono, it's 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 maximum ultra green and then we started fishing with fluorocarbon i went through a whole like list of fluorocarbons every fluorocarbon has its strengths and weaknesses but i wanted a fluorocarbon that was small and i wanted it to have good knot strengths uh, so and i wanted that when i backlash something on a bait caster it's not going to just destroy itself basically uh so i settled on sunline FC Sniper, and I've been running that for like three years now. So, first year I get into it, I bought like every brand under the sun just to try them. There's some like good brands, there's some brand names I don't like things. Uh, I, I try everything from low end to high end, eBay brands, everything, and I set it on Sunlight. Uh, Sunlight's much, it's actually one of the more expensive lights, but all my other, all those other lines. Uh, either one, they just didn't cast good, it was too thick, the knots weren't, the knot strength wasn't good, that type of stuff. So, line is probably the most delicate thing in your entire fishing uh, setup. So, you have to pick the best line that you can afford. And when I say you can afford, it's up to you. If you think $10 a spool is too expensive, then, you know, it's on you. But for me, I'd rather have expensive line and cheap reels and cheap rods. That's just me. So, once again, pick the lines that you like. Get the knots that work with that line. So, for, let me let me give you an example. I have a lot of knots. Uh, if I'm on mono, say the Omniflex or the Ultra Green, it's a uni knot or even a double uni knot sometimes. If it's braid, it's a uni knot. If it's fluorocarbon, San Diego jam knot. Or sometimes some people call it an improved clinch knot. Okay, because you have you have to switch your knots around like that. If you don't, those knots will break at 50% of what that line's rated for. So like a 20-pound line will break at 10 pounds. A 6-pound line will break at 3 pounds, which is horrible. So you got to get that figured out. You got to get your system figured out. Okay, so uh, because sometimes you can't just go to a bigger line. Okay, sometimes, like for example, crankbaits, right? Crankbaits. I would say 95% of the time it's done on 10 pound and 12 pound line. If you go to a 14, the crankbait just won't run right. So you have to learn how to tie or figure out the best knot for your 12 and your 10 pound line. Okay, so get that stuff dialed in because I, I lose a, a lot of fish. I've lost a lot of fish in the beginning like that, but now my system's pretty good where I hardly ever uh, lose any fish due to knots. If, if it's a failure, it's usually I'm cranking shell beds. Fish smashes it, brings me into the shells, and the shells they, the shells cut my line. Stuff like that. Something that you can't really avoid, but you you got to control 
all the things that you can control, like your knots, your lines, you know, retying is another major thing. People don't retie much. Um, for me, cranking shell bits, I retie every three to four casts, okay? I look at my target, usually it's on side imaging. And let me know if you guys want to know about electronics and side imaging. That we could do a whole like five parter on that. I mean, between me and Hua, a hybrid killer, we we pretty much got that down too. Um, so yeah, uh, I look at my side imaging. I put a waypoint on it, and then I bomb three or four casts over the juiciest spot I can find. And a lot of times, that's rock, that's timber, things like that. It's gonna nick up the line, so I have to retie the line all the time. And you have to be confident in retying your knots, you know. So if you look at your knot, if it doesn't look perfect, retie it. The knot has to look perfect every time, okay. If you're 99% sure that knot's good, retie it. You got to be 100%, okay. So that's number four. That's definitely number four right there. And this is the one where I would say most people don't get better because of this one mistake so this is the number one mistake i see people do after a day of fishing even if it's a good day of fishing you're gonna have mistakes and it is your job to keep track of those mistakes so for example you go out you win a tournament right so this is what me and my brother does a lot We'll go out, we'll, we'll, we'll either he or I or, or even some of our friends, you know. We try to ask the questions that will make us better. So even if we've won the tournament, sometimes we're still not satisfied because I won that tournament because I got lucky. See, that doesn't sound right, right? So a lot of times we'd win tournaments because our game plan went perfectly. But sometimes it's... I won that tournament, but I should have smashed it, right? Like, in terms of inches and everything, I came in 81, but I should have had 95. Well, those days. So when you come home and you look at your day over, you need to say to yourself, what can I do to make this better? What didn't I do or what, like, can I have done differently in terms of game plan or whatever, right? Well, at least in the, the tournament world, we go, we carry GoPros, so we record almost every catch. So a lot of times, we'll we'll catch like, oh, we were daydreaming, right? And we get bit. Uh, sometimes we'll catch, our hook sets are wrong. Like, hook sets for the chatterbaits, I used to hook set like a jig. Don't do it. Side, side, done. On a jig bite, reel up the slack, hit them hard. On a worm bite, reel up the slack, hit them hard. And then you also get into every, a lot of other things. Now, for the weekend anglers, for you, it's more of like, okay, did I cover enough water? Okay, that type of thing. Um, I know I noticed this in the crappy fishing world. When you uh, when you hook, you put your hook through your minnow, try to try to try multiple different positions on the, the minnow itself. Sometimes, I know a lot of people hook the uh, hook through the nose of the minnow. I myself like to hook it through the back. I just find that the uh, when you hook it through the back, the fish swims a little bit better, and the hookup ratio goes up. So that's one thing you gotta you know pay attention to. So so if you go out and you're just missing fish, right? Or even if you caught ten out of fifteen, well in theory, you know in your our minds, it's supposed to be fifteen out of fifteen. You know, so keep that thing in the back of your head. Uh, reasons why things aren't working. Uh, when did you check your last, you know, when was your, was your hook even sharp? That's a big one too, you know, so you got to learn from your mistakes and it's also good if you had somebody who went with you so you could bounce ideas off of them. Um, but yeah, that's the major one. Number one is you got to learn from your mistakes. It could be anything. It could be like whether you tied your knots right, uh, whether you, you know, you just, even on your cast, I know in the surfing, the surf industry or surf world, your cast means a lot. Like you could give 47 setup to somebody else and their cast won't be as far. So you need to learn how to cast. That's a, that's a, that's a good skill to have also. So you have to learn from your mistakes. You need to learn from your mistakes because it, because fixing the angler is a lot cheaper than 
buying new stuff. <laughs> Put it that way. So you want to fix yourself, maximize, take your gear to its maximum potential before looking at other things. Uh, and that's huge. Okay, that saves a lot of money. I know we talk about a lot of gear and stuff like that in here, but a lot of times I think if you just fix yourself, you will be much better than going out and buying new gear. And that's that's pretty much all I got for today. So that's the top five reasons why you suck. And take it from personal experience, I applied all that to me and to my brother. And that's why right now we're pretty good in the tournament world. You know, if the tournaments that we go to, um, I don't want to you know brag on myself, but the tournaments that we go to, we tend to finish in the top 25%. That, that's what it is so all right guys hit like and subscribe this, to this uh channel share these tips with your friends who suck and if i helped you give me a thumbs up uh if i left anything out if anything that you also noticed uh that we should touch base on not gear wise but like just say mental preparations uh coaching yourself up is a big one and also, like, if you're fishing a tournament, and if you guys want to talk about, like, the positive mental uh, side of tournament fishing, we could talk about that, too. But let me know in the comments what you guys want to hear, and uh, we'll do our best to cover that topic. So, once again, uh, Connery from Out of Work, and I uh, hope you guys learned a lot from this video. All right? Till next time, guys. See ya. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching, but stop freeloading. We need you guys to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the bell. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Facebook. And we'll see you guys on the next one.